Why is it so popular to hate on Tag Heuer? Look at this photograph. We treat them like they're the Nickelback of watch companies. Every time I do it makes me laugh. Maybe they deserve it. Hey guys, I'm Max and welcome back to Hope Once. So when I first got into watches, it seemed like it was almost fashionable to hate on Tag Heuer. I mean, when all you see in advertisements are these big gaudy watches with shiny bezels and little design language, what else are you gonna think? And I have to say, I was on that bandwagon, but like most generalizations, the story goes a little deeper than that. So let's back up for a second. As a watch enthusiast, I like companies that stand for something. Companies that have a strong brand identity. And for Hoyer, which was a company around 100 years before Tag came along, they had this in spades, which was their strong association with automobile racing. But in recent decades, it seems like that identity has been somewhat eroded. Since 2014, when the venerable Jean-Claude Beaver took over at the helm, we've seen some glimmers of hope coming out of Tag Hoyer. But it wasn't until I got this Caliber 18 in my hand when I finally started to ask the question, is Tag Warrior back? The Carrera range for TAG is a mixed bag with stark contrast between modern watches and vintage inspired pieces. Introduced in 2015, the Hoyer Caliber 18 Telemeter is a standout whose looks adhere more faithfully to the brand's heritage. Heavily influenced by the Carreras of the 60s, the Caliber 18 is, in my opinion, a perfect blend of vintage styling with modern finishing. In terms of proportions, TAG has chosen to grow the case of this watch to a modern yet conservative 39mm, up from its original 36 And with the incorporation of an automatic movement, the thickness has also grown to an just acceptable 13.5mm. Unfortunately, this does put the lug width at an odd 19mm. The highlight here would have to be this champagne somber style. The color recreates the appearance of decades of patina, but still manages to be subtle and not overbearing. Plenty of subtle details greet the eye as you look closer. For example, the edge of the dial curves downwards as it approaches the case, much like a pipe amp. And the subdials are also recessed, giving the watch visual dimension. And unlike previous variants, TAG has avoided adding red or orange accents to the chronograph hand to distract from a restrained color scheme. Through a display case back, we get a view of the Caliber 18, which is merely a Solita SW300 with a chronograph module on top. Now, there is nothing wrong with modular chronographs, but at this price, you'd expect to see an in-house integrated one. Luckily, TAG Hoyer rectified this just a couple years later, and the new caliber Hoyer 02 is available in many of their chronographs after 2017. A box sapphire crystal sits proud of the case, closely mimicking the domed plexiglass of yesteryear with modern scratch resistance. These angular lugs are also immediately recognizable to collectors of vintage Carreras. Their downward angle also allow the watch to rest flat on the wrist, making the case thickness a lot more tolerable. Now, curved sapphire does give it somewhat of a milky ring around the edge of the crystal, but it's a small sacrifice for such meticulous design and delicious off-angle distortions. Even this black rally strap is soft and supple with a double deploying clasp bearing the company logo. Very thoughtful. So I think one of my problems with TAG is just the sheer number of models that they have. If you don't believe me, just look at their website. It kind of reminds me of that famous jam experiment. This is where they set up a table at a grocery store and offered 24 flavors of jam. The next day they came back with just six. Guess which day sold more jam? 
Now, there's probably more watch channels than Jam on YouTube, so I'd encourage you to support the ones that you watch by liking and subscribing to them. It really helps. But in regards to Tag Warrior's lineup, there's really just three watches that appeal to me, and they happen to be the ones with the richest racing history. Now, we have to remember that Jack Hoyer himself was a racing driver, and the watches that he helped personally craft and refine were the Carrera, the Octavia, and the Monaco. The Monaco was, of course, made famous on the wrist of Steve McQueen in the 1971 movie Le Mans. The story is that Jack Hoyer purposely placed the crown on the wrong side of the watch, just to remind people that he had helped to develop the first automatically winding chronograph movement. Talk about a boss move. Of course, we do also have modern versions that have corrected this minor inconvenience. The Octavia was born as a dash clock in the 30s, designed for automobiles and aviation, thus the name Octavia. When that dashboard stopwatch was retired in 1961, it was reincarnated as a wrist chronograph, the only one of the trio with a turning bezel. Then we come to the Carrera, which is named after the Carrera Pan Americana, a border-to-border -border endurance race held in Mexico. It seems that Jack Hoyer was not the only one enamored with the name, as flagship Porsches also bear the same moniker. Out of the three watches mentioned, the Carrera will be the one considered the most versatile. Think of it as a handsome gentleman's racing chronograph, perfectly suited for the office as well as on the wrist of some weekend track warrior. It was interesting to trade the typical tachymeter scale for a telemeter, which utilizes the difference between the speed of light and sound to calculate distance. This was frequently used during wars when you would start the chronograph when you saw the flash of artillery and stopped it when you heard the bang. Wearing the watch compared to something like a Speedmaster, I find it less stern and a bit more playful. Now, making a vintage-inspired watch is like making a modern Star Trek movie. You risk offending people on both ends of the spectrum, but in my opinion, this one gets very few Rotten Tomatoes. So is Tag Heuer back? I'm not sure, but this Caliber 18 certainly is a step in the right direction. Now, this was a limited model, so you can only get it used now, but an arguably better choice may be the 160th year anniversary. See, that watch uses their new in-house caliber, so it's easier to justify the price. Anyway, in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on Tag Heuer. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.